We've had our rocket stove going on three winters now. Here's a review on it. We'll let you know both the pros and cons of our experience. We have this large wood stove in the family room and a smaller rocket stove here in the dining room. For a super hot fire, all of us are going to run right into the living room and fire up the, the big wood stove, you know. There's nothing like a cold day having lots of heat. However, for the little stove, being able to fire it up in the morning, having a sustainable heat that lasts until noon just from the firebox itself, and then all the heat that's retained in the bench will radiate for the rest of the day. Here's how Dad lights it. I'm getting a little bit of paper burning gets a draft going, and uh, after the draft is running, it's just smooth sailing. Mom has a different take. I like putting little pieces of cardboard in there to kind of keep it going, but you know, I don't like how much it needs to be baby. This one, especially in the first hour, you just really have to tend it regularly, probably every just every few minutes. Um, I usually don't have the time. You know, the other one, I can just get it started and then add some logs to it. But now, once this thing starts going, this is like the best spot in the house. And it keeps my tea warm, too. It's like Here's the safety concern. The chamber itself is not something you want to reach up and touch because it's good and hot. This is not. I can reach up and grab that. It's cool to the touch. If I were to run this for another two hours, it would be warm but not never hot. We recently made a modification to it. We had been doing some more research and found that if we could shorten the chamber, we'd get some better efficiency. It only has to be 12 inches. It's going to sit up this high. That'll be cute. Well, it's extra. It's just going to be like this. Okay, back up. How did you get the barrel out? We took a hammer and chisel and just chiseled out the uh, hardened um, cob. Interesting. Oh, look at this. The inside, so it's hard on the outside, but soft on the end. And then pull the cob out and lift it right out. We also cut this barrel down uh, from a 36 inches down to the 14 inches we have here. And it meant cutting both barrel and the chamber inside. And then what was exciting is we were just re right back over it and then re -linsied. It actually drafts better. Uh, there's a shorter distance, uh, get a hotter burn um, in the barrel, so we're getting more warmth. This is our cleaning method. We use the magnet system, yeah, and uh, we just get in there and clean out any nails that we might have. And then uh, just a, a little vacuum of some of the ashes that might be in there. This is the first time in three years that we've actually opened the clean out, and there was nothing in there. It was just a little bit of ash. So we're not seeing a lot of ash getting pulled through the whole system. It's, it's pretty much burning up in the combustion chamber. So, would we do it again? Absolutely, we would do this again. Just this very style works very well. So what are you waiting for? You know you want a pile of dirt on your floor. on doing a rocket stove that would be underground. And it's kind of a radiant floor, but mm -hmm. with a mm -hmm. totally different twist. Please subscribe. For more information, you can click the website link below. Thanks for watching.